Hello everybody, welcome to my kitchen, my name is Davina. I'm just going to take you through um, a few of my favourite watercress recipes this evening. I'm going to start off with a salad um, which combines apples, walnuts, lemon juice and a lovely dressing as well and combined with the watercress really is a vibrant salad. So let's start off this evening with the fennel. Okay, I've got a fennel here. Fennel is, I find, an ingredient that people either love or they hate. And I think that's because it has um, an aniseedy flavour. So we're just going to remove the stalks like this. I'm just going to thinly slice it. And with um, a fennel, you're really lucky because it's got lines down it from top to bottom. So you can just follow those when you're thin, thinly slicing it. Just right away to the end there, like that, there we go, and it should fall apart really easily like that. Fennel's really crunchy, you know long gone are the days now when people say salad and uh, they turn up with a little bit of um, thin straggly lettuce and tomato, nothing wrong with that, but uh, we've got more adventures with our salads now and this has no sight of lettuce at all in it, or in fact tomatoes either, but of course it will have the wonder vi wonderful vibrancy of watercress. So just break that up like that, and if you find in the middle, or right in the centre, you've got to sort of tough a little bit, just cut those up a bit more thinly and they'll be absolutely fine. Okay. So, I'm going to well, there we are. And then in my bowl, my salad bowl that I'm going to serve it in, I'm going to just put some watercress into the base. And if you buy your watercress bag, then it usually comes in about 85 gram bags, um, or of course you can get it in a, a bunch as well. And here in Hampshire, we're really lucky because we've got watercress growing freely. And of course it grows in the water, so that's why it's called a semi-aquatic plant. And it grows through the fresh spring waters. And in Alsford, where of course watercress has grown for many years, it has the watercress steam line as well, the steam train, which in Victoria times went from Alsford right up to London to sort of Covent Garden area where it was met with the watercress street sellers and they'd go around selling watercress each day. So on the bottom of my bowl, just fluff up the watercress, just going to put the fennel in the top of that. Don't do it very sort of structurally, just pop it in. It doesn't need to be really format, formatted. Just pop it in and then put a lay on the top of the watercress. There we go. Stalk bit we don't need, or the bottom of the stalk bit rather. And then I'm going to cut up a couple of red apples. I'm not going to peel them because you want the red apple to give the salad some colour. Take out the middle section which of course are the tips and the core. Remove the stalk there and then just cut the centre out. There we go. I'm just going to put those little bits out of the way. There we go. There they are. Just cut through the apple. You can either cut it into slices or cut it into quarters. I've got a pink lady apple here. If I was making it nearer the autumn time, obviously I'd use a English cock's apple. Drop the little bits and put on there. They were an instant colour with the red and the deep green leaves of the watercress. Another apple there too. And then 
and just take the knife down the centre as I was before, just to remove the core and the tips. Now, wheat watercress has for many years always thought to be the bit on the side when you're making a salad, but indeed. It has so many vitamins and so many minerals in it that it's so valuable in our diet. And just recently, a lot of work has been done using watercress. It has multiple minerals and vitamins, as I've said, to fight, help fight diseases such as cancer. And a lot of research has been done recently whereby patients who are actually have chemotherapy or go through a chemotherapy journey, if they have a smoothie with watercress, then it helps their body to actually fight the cancer and gives them vitamins and minerals to support their um, immune system. Pop that out of the way. I'm now going to just make a very simple dressing. So I'm going to use the juice of one lemon. There we are. You'll have to excuse me going backwards and forwards because this is obviously a domestic kitchen, not a den kitchen, similar to the ones that. Uh, Dome kitchen similar to the ones that we actually have at the Watercrest Festival each year. So I've really just altered my own kitchen at home to be able to do this den for you today. So yeah, you'll have to just bear with me going backwards and forwards to get things behind me because I've got my setup trays there. Just and then we juice into a jar. I always use a small jar when I'm making salad dressings. It's very easy. And inevitably, if you're using a juicer, which I haven't done today, I could prevent these little bits of pots getting in there. So I'll pour it into a little strainer and then back into my jar. There we go. Take out the little bits you don't want. Chasing this round the jar rather. There we go. So that's ready now. And to that I'm going to add a little bit of sugar. Some walnut oil. So I need a tablespoon of walnut oil into the jar. three tablespoons of oil. Now you could use rapeseed oil. Tonight I'm using just extra virgin of olive oil, which I always say for, for using in dressings because um, it has a lovely fruity flavour. And it's extra virgin olive oil, so it hasn't been process as with the other oils that are mixed together and we're using cooking. Absolutely fine to use in cooking, but with extra virgin olive oil, why use it in cooking? Because you need it fl its flavours when you're making a dressing such as I am today. So we'll break up the walnuts. Just going to put a little bit of pepper in there. You only need a little bit because you will actually get the pepperiness from the watercress <clears throat> going through the salad as well. A little bit more sugar I think. There we are. Pop the walnuts on top. Pour the dressing over the delicious fennel 
and the watercress. And there you've got a beautiful, quick salad to enjoy for supper, for tea or for lunch or whenever. And when we really do get some summery weather, this will be lovely. And of course, not a lettuce leaf or a tomato inside. So really crunchy, crunchiness of the apples, the crunchiness of the walnuts, the fennel, and then you've got the pepperiness and the goodness from the watercress as well in the base. So if you want to add a few more walnuts, do like that. And then just pop this out of the way because I don't need this tray anymore. recipe again I've chosen a salad to do and this recipe is a recipe which comes from the watercress company in Dorset and they commissioned a lady called Susie Morrison who is a chef she's worked in um, Michelin star restaurants and she loves teaching people about food and also she has quite a holistic approach to her thoughts about food. And I'm going to just try one of her recipes this evening for you to be able to see. Um, I'm making a carrot and pistachio recipe, which actually is featured on the Watercress website. It's called Peshwari Carrot, Orange Blossom and Watercress watercress salad so beautiful flavours going together matching really well so in my bowl here I've grated approximately 400 grams of carrots so it was roughly about sort of uh, four to six really chunky carrots so I haven't uh, grated them finely I've grated them quite coarsely so the texture's there and in the bowl here, I have actually together, ground together, some roasted pistachio nuts, which were roasted for literally for about eight to 10 minutes at about 160. Pop them in my bowl, let them go cold. And meanwhile, with the pistachios, I also roasted some nigella seed and also some desiccated coconut. And then you can either grind them with a rolling pin, or as I've done today, I use my pestle and mortar and just ground them together. And the, the flavours and the smell of the three ingredients, which is simply nigella seeds, which are also known as black onion seeds. We've got the pistachios there, and we've got the coconut, the desiccated coconut. So just roast them all together. And as with roasting spices, dry spices, the flavour and the aroma really comes off when, it's, when they're actually cooked. Whereas when they're not cooked, although the flavour's there, you get a totally different flavour when you roast either, as I've done the pistachio, the onion seed and the coconut, or with, again, with spices as well. If you're going to cook some spices like cumin seed, they're totally different when they're roasted as to when you get them out of the jar and you use them straight from the jar. So that's the salad. We've got the carrots there. I've also sliced beforehand some onion and some an ordinary white onion or brown onion. I've got here also some raisins, which I've soaked in orange juice. So I put the raisins in a saucepan, just cover them with some orange ju juice. So roughly it's about 70 grams of raisins and the juice of an orange. Bring them to a simmer in a small saucepan and then just let them cool and they'll just plump up beautifully swallowing that lovely orange juice so yeah we've got some lovely raisins there so i'm going to make a salad dressing so again i've got another little jar here and i want a couple of teaspoons 
teaspoons of lemon juice. Dip this onto the tray. I'm going to pour that into my jar. I'm going to add some orange blossom water. Now this is a very gentle flavour and as if you open the bottle you smell it, it's very fragrant. So we're going to use about five drops for this. So I think I'll use the cap to do this because knowing my luck, when I actually pour, pour it in, I shall end up using half the bottle. So that's what the cap's for just to help you. So one, two, three, four, five. An orange blossom water you can use in a whole range of things. Sometimes I'll add it into cream, if I'm a double cream, if I'm making a dessert, or you can add it to strawberries. So add a little drop of orange blossom, blossom water to strawberries and they really help to bring the flavor out. So lemon juice, the orange blossom and then the juice of an orange. Just squeezing the juice there. Pop that into the jar. So loads of vitamin C, which complements the vitamins in the water press, which we're going to add in a little while. We're going to add two tablespoons of olive oil this time, into the jar. One, two. I'm just going to have a quick check. I've got all the ingredients in there. A little bit of pepper and salt. There we go. Shake it up well. There we go. Just pop my board out of the way. press onto the base of the plate. In the bowl I'm going to just add the carrot to the onion. There we go. That's it. Mix that together. Raisins to the carrot. Stir those well together. And I'm going to add the mixture of the pistachio nuts, the nigella seeds and the coconut. To the carrots. There we go. If you wanted to, to reduce this recipe, it's very easy. Um, the quantities are very easy to halve off. Um, I 
I've done the total quantity, which is 400 grams of carrots, but if you wanted to, of course, you could use, halve the recipe very easily. But I would actually keep the same amount of pistachio nuts and coconut to go with less carrot. Um, you'll get a lovely, lovely flavour going through there. So I'm just spooning some of the carrot mixture and the raisin mixture onto the salad and then to the rest in the bowl just add the fruity dressing that we've made. The remainder of the pistachio nuts, the nigella seed and the carrot. quantity of salad, just delicious fresh salad. It will go really well. salad very easily in the um, morning. Any, any leftover you could keep in a sealed container and, and it would be fine in the refrigerator for about 24 hours. There we go, lovely colour of the salad, the watercress, vibrant vitamins and minerals in the watercress, the carrots mixed with the raisins which were soaked in orange juice and then we made a mixture of roasted pistachio nuts, roasted desiccated coconut and of course those roasted nigella seeds and then a delicious dressing just simply poured over the top which is a fruity dressing with orange and lemon juice and oil. Right, just got these out of the way. lots and lots of different recipes for watercress soup. This is my own favourite recipe and it's a combination of um, using shallots and garlic. Um, I've actually put those in the pan and that onto the table there. And here we've got the potato which I've cooked off in some butter and also actually put in a shallot as well to that and just cooked it off till the potato is soft and it will take about 15 minutes on a very low heat and then we're going to pop that back onto my hob which is just behind me here pop the heat up that's it and now I'm going to add to that some chopped up parsley This is flat leaf parsley that I'm using. Don't throw the stalks away because the stalks have lots of flavour in it. And just roughly chop. Move the knife across it so 
you know, you don't have to have it perfectly chopped, it's roughly chopped. And I'm going to add that to my saucepan. And then I will need roughly about 400 grams, three to 400 grams of watercress. As I said, in a bag you get roughly about 85 grams of watercress. So I'm having a good old guessing game here. Two great big handfuls. Give that a quick stir. I'm going to add to that some frozen peas. It goes really well with um, watercress. So pea and spinach soup. There's about 400 grams roughly of frozen peas here. So I'll add those to the sauce as well. Just give them a nice stir um, so that all the ingredients are mixed up together. Just bring my sauce from back to the table so that you can see what's going on. There we go. There's the peas, the watercress, and the flat leaf parsley. Flat leaf parsley has got sort of almost like a celery flavour, and that's why I've, I've used it instead of the curled parsley. If you've got some curled parsley to use up, then yes, use it, no problem at all. Um, and if you want to use the curled parsley and yet you've got some, perhaps some celery that needs using up in the refrigerator, then add some chopped celery and you'll get the same similar flavours I'm using here with just the flat leaf. I'm going to put some stock in there. So I've, I did make up about a litre of vegetable stock. I've used a little bit cooking with the potato and the shallot and the rest of it now goes in the pan. Stir that round. Bring that to the boil. I think I'll add a little bit more watercress as I've got some left in my bowl here. Delicious. That needs a few minutes just to cook through. Pop the lid on to keep the heat in. There we are. So I'll put that onto my induction hob to the right of me. So I'm just going to leave that for a few minutes. And whilst that's just cooking, I just want to talk to you a little bit about this recipe and all the recipes that I've done today you'll actually find on the watercress website so if you look up www.Oswald Watercress Festival it'll come up with the virtual watercress festival which is happening this week and on each of the recipe pages there's a lot of recipes and you'll find all the recipes that I've done today this is a watercress and cheese scone, very easy to make. Again, the recipe's on the website. It's just self-rising flour with a, a little bit of baking powder, some rubbed in butter, some chopped up watercress, which you just fold in, and some cheese. I used a mature um, cheddar cheese, and there's lots of lovely Hampshire mature cheeses that you can use um, in this recipe. Lyburn cheese is excellent. That's a Winchester old cheese, which is the stronger of the cheeses that they actually produce. Will go really well in a scone like this. And then I stirred all of that in. Use some buttermilk. If you haven't got buttermilk, you could use yogurt. That's a good replacement. And just top it up with a little bit of 
of milk. So I added approximately three quarters of a carton of buttermilk. Saved a little bit because I wanted a little bit to just brush on the tops. Bring the dough together and then roll it out, not too thinly, to about 2.5 centimetres, 3 centimetres thick. Stamp them out, pop them onto a baking tray that's either just lightly greased or you could use some non-stick baking paper. Pop them in the oven, about 200 degrees C in a fan oven, 220 in a conventional or gas mark 7 and then cook them for about 25 minutes and they'll rise perfectly like this. Before you put them in the oven, I forgot to say, just brush them lightly with the leftover buttermilk, put some more cheese on top so you get a really nice golden brown finish. So that's the cheese and watercress scones and this would go really, really well with the soup that I've made or you could have them just buttered with some more cheese in them or you could eat them very quickly they make very quickly so if you've got um, and they freeze beautifully too so if you wanted to make a batch of scones that I roughly made about eight, eight in this batch actually you could freeze them and they freeze really well for about two to three months so if you've got some unexpected visitors just get them out of the freezer pop them into a hot oven for about five to ten minutes and then serve them again, as I say, with soup or just lightly buttered. Or of course you could serve them equally as well with some of the salads that I've made today. When you go back to the pan to see how things are getting on. Oh yes, they're fine. So this is cooking now nicely now. When that's ready, I'm going to just quickly use my hand blender just to blend all the ingredients together. Or you could put them into a food processor or a liquid, liquidizer just to actually grind the watercress and also the peas, the potato and the shallot so you get a nice smooth finish. Now for those of you that have been watching some of the events that have been happening or going to happen this week, we have Dr Kyle who would be really interesting if you're interested in the medical side of watercress because I've said it has many benefits, not only the um, vitamins but also the minerals as well that it, can, it um, contains and he'll be talking to you about some of the work that's going on using watercress on the medical side. He's also done some research as well on the protein content in, of watercress which is very interesting. So that's just a couple of the events that's on the timetable. We've of course got the watercress eating championships which will be towards the end of the festival week and we'll, all, we'll also have some more cookery demonstrations as well at various times of the day. this back to the table so hopefully you can see what's in there with the watercress and the peas it's really excuse the noise and I quickly discuss the soup
we're about there now. Just a little more time. to it to finish it off or you can as I'm going to do now is to just pour a little swirl of cream on the top there we go there we go so a little bit of cream on the top just to finish that off and as I've said you can either serve it with some scones like that or simply serve it on its own either hot or cold so it's really good as a, a cold soup in a hot sunny day which i'm sure like me you're all waiting for so thank you very much for watching my demo um, I hope that you've enjoyed it. All the recipes are on the website. So just to run back through what I made, I started off with the watercress, apple and sliced fennel with a very simple dressing of walnut oil and extra virgin oil and then some chopped apple and walnuts. And then I went on to make the salad, which is Susie's salad, which is carrots onion, soaked raisins, the combination of roasted pistachio, nigella seeds and coconut all roasted together and then just served with the vibrant watercress and then finally the watercress soup, just a mixture of shallot, shallots, potato, watercress of course, and frozen peas and then the cheese and watercress scones which again is very simply to make and they freeze beautifully so thank you again for watching and i'll be back on another event during the week with some more recipes for you thank you